Welcome to your Nexus 2 help guide. This session will discuss how to use Pearl Clips to create and manage your databases. In this session, we will discuss five main topics. The first will be accessing Pearl Clips. Then we will look at creating a database, then how to set up the database hierarchy, then how to understand and manage the database layout, then finally, how to add a new column type. When you first open Nexus 2, Pro Clips can be found in the Data Management tab within the Communications window. In terms of accessibility, this window can be closed by either double-clicking on the Data Management tab or by selecting the, the X in the top right corner. To reopen, I can double-click back on the Data Management tab or I can select F2 on the keyboard. In terms of its position, I can simply drag it to a different area within Nexus, like so, or I can choose through Put it on a new window completely. I will dock it again so that it's in its original position and resize my tools pane. If you encounter a situation where you don't like the layout of the panes, you can automatically change it back to its default by selecting Window, then Reset to Default Layout. Within Pro Eclipse, the most important functionality to understand is the organization of your data. Nexus requires a hierarchy that begins with a database. While the database is ultimately just the start of the path of where you are going to store your data, many users like to create different databases for each researcher or research group. To create a new database, click on the Pro Eclipse menu and select Manage Eclipse Databases. I will explain the layout of this interface later and thus will only focus on creating a new database at this time. Click Add New and then navigate to the folder in which you would like your database to be stored. While you could choose any folder within any drive, you will want to select a folder which has the proper read-write privileges across user accounts. An example of one such folder is the Public Documents folder. Once in the correct folder, I will select Make New Folder and go ahead and give my database a name, in this case, Database1. I'll go ahead and click OK. I will now see that my database in the Pro Clips and that it has been registered within this interface. To open the database, I will double click on database one. Now I have my choice of two parallel hierarchies that I can use to organize my data. I will start with the most traditional one first. This involves creating a new patient classification by clicking on this green button over here. You can think of a patient classification as a study. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a study name. As long as I'm in this level, I can go ahead and create as many studies as I would like. Within a study, I'm going to have multiple subjects or participants that comprise my study. So, subject one, subject two, etc. Within each subject, I'm going to have one or more sessions. You can think of a session as uh, different days within the lab or different interventions or a pre and post type situation. So, I will go ahead and give my session a name, either day one or I can give it a name of intervention one or even pre. If I want to jump to different levels within the database, I can go ahead and click on the arrow beside that level. So I can go ahead and choose different subjects here very quickly. I will use this functionality now to go back up to the level of the database so that I can show you uh, the second workflow. This involves creating a new top level instead of patient classification. Within a top level, I'm going to have a new project. And then within a project, I'm also going to have a new session. So you can see that the two uh, hierarchies have the same number of levels, just that the names are different. You will also see that Nexus requires an active session to be present in order to record data. Within a session, there are multiple headings that can be used to uniquely identify or characterize a trial. The first two columns, name and files, are non-editable and will be populated whenever a trial, subject, or polygon report has been saved. Within the name column, we can see three different icons. The first one, the blue icon with the white P, denotes a polygon report. Next, we have a red circle with a black stick figure to characterize a subject. 
and then we have a light blue circle with a black camera icon to denote a trial. Within the files column, we can see different icons to denote what file types are associated with each trial. Moving from left to right, we can see that WAC01 has a movie or AVI file, it has analog data, it has 2D camera data, it has a C3D, and a CSV or text file has been exported. We can also see the subject and polygon report icons have been duplicated in this column as well. Managing these files and their corresponding file types will be covered in a subsequent video. The remaining columns are referred to as metadata. These can be used to provide additional information based upon a user's preference. In this particular session, we have the option of adding in a description, notes, and to allocate a foot contact to each force plate. The exact display of columns is saved to a configuration called a column scheme, which is found within the Manage Eclipse Databases option through the Pro Eclipse menu. Each database will have a column scheme specified, and all subsequent sessions within that database will have the same column layout. We can see here that all databases are currently using the default column scheme. To create a new column scheme, simply type a name into the new scheme name box. So I will type in custom and then click create. We can see here that whichever database was highlighted below will be automatically allocated with that column scheme. To change the column scheme, I can use the drop down menu here. I will keep it at custom so we can look at how we might modify the layout of a column scheme. So what I'll need to do is enter a database that is currently using the column scheme I want to modify and then navigate to a session. So I'm going to close this and then navigate to a session which I want to modify. We can see here that the layout of this column scheme is different than the one that had default. If I want to right click on a header, I can see that I can set a column type. I can insert a column after this uh, column or I can choose to remove this column. Remember, I cannot remove name or files, but I can insert a column in between the two if I would like. So if I want to change the description to, let's say, a force plate, I can right click and do that here. Now you can see here that I have the ability to assign a foot contact to a force plate. If I wanted to make my database uh, look like the uh, default column scheme, I can right click back on, uh, on the force plate and change it to description. And I can go ahead and add in two more columns. So I'm going to right click and insert column of type. And let's say I added in force plate two by accident, that's okay. I can just go ahead and right click on notes again and insert column of type force plate one. And now you can see here that this looks the same as the default. If I want to go ahead and save this column scheme, simply navigate away from the session or close Nexus. Uh, remember that all other databases that are currently using this scheme will now have the same layout specified here. If you would like to edit the column types that are available to be added to a column scheme, click on my Pro Eclipse menu and select Configure Column Types. Not only will you see a list of all available column types, but you can also add or remove a selected column type. So I'm going to add one here by clicking on the Add Column Type. I'm then going to highlight that column type. I'm going to enter in an identifier and the header text. So the identifier is what's going to be used when we right click to identify that column type. So I'm going to type in injury side here, uh, and then the header text will actually be what is displayed at the top, so I'm just going to type in side. Just as an example, you can see here for force plate 1, when I right clicked earlier, I identified that column type with force plate 1, but the actual text itself in the header is FP1. So that's going to be something similar here for injury side. I'm then going to go ahead and select a column base type, and you can see here there's a, a long list of selections. Uh, display and free are similar and allow a user to type in any um, text that they would like into that box. Um, I'm going to show you an example of list and button here, so I'm not going to talk about those just yet. A checkbox will allow the user to um, put in a checkbox so that they can say whether or not something is uh, either true or false. Uh, and then you can also choose to extract information from the C3D or the VSK directly. So the first thing I'm going to show you actually is the metadata button. So I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to go ahead and select a metadata key. The metadata key is the variable used to save the contents of that column to each trial's ENF file. So I'm going to go ahead and select side here because this is one of the pre-allocated ones. You can also go ahead and type in your own individual one and it will create a new variable. 
within that DNF. So a metadata button is actually going to function similar to the force plate, so it'll allow a user to toggle between uh, preset uh, selections. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a left, a right, uh, and none. I'm then also going to apply color to each so that they correspond to the, the colors that are in plug and gate. So uh, for the left side, I'm going to choose red. For the right side, I'm going to choose green. Uh, and then for none, I will just choose gray. Okay, so that I'll show you this uh, the metadata button in a second. I'm going to add in a second column type, um, and that one is going to be called um, activity. I'm going to make the, the identifier and the header text the same. And again, I'm going to choose the base type first. I'm going to select a list. Uh, and this will differ because this will allow the user to select from a drop down menu. So uh, here I'm going to also choose activity. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in my values. So uh, I can say walking, jogging, running, and jumping. Uh, once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate back to the session. I'm going to now right click again on force plate 2 and insert a new column. So you can see here I can add in injury side, but the header text will actually just appear as side. I can then do the same thing. I can right click, insert a column of type, and it's going to be activity. And it'll show up as activity. So if I want to actually put in uh, an injury side for uh, one of my trials, I can just go ahead and click on the button and you can see here it's toggled to left or to right or to none. So I'll just leave it on none. For the activity, if I double click on that box now, I can see that I have an option to go ahead and select one of the uh, different uh, presets that I had set in column types. So in this one, I'll select jogging. So now any uh, column scheme uh, or any database that we use with this column scheme will have side and activity added to it. Thank you for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions about your hardware or software, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at